Good morning, I'm Jasmine Anderson. We begin with a just released Newsday Siena College poll showing a tight race to replace expelled Long Island Congressman George Santos. Ken Bufa takes a look at what Long Islanders are thinking in a story you'll see only in Newsday. Political veteran Tom Swazi and political newcomer Mozzie Pillip are locked in a heated battle for the third congressional district seat. So how do Long Islanders view the candidates in Tuesday's special election? Mozzie, I'm you. done with Democrats. Because the Democrat, I was a Democrat my whole life. But lately they've gone too far to the left. I voted for Tom Swazi. He ran already. He um, served us for, I believe, two two or three terms. According to an exclusive Newsday Siena College poll of likely voters in the district, if the election was held today, 48% would vote for Swazi the Democrat and 44% would vote for Pillip, who's running on the Republican line. All right, so Joy, how should we be looking at these numbers? Look at the margin of error. What it tells us is that this is a very, very, very close race. On the issue of the migrant crisis, 49% felt Pillip would do a better job handling the issue versus Swazi's 40%. Another big concern for people in the third district is the Israel-Hamas war. 44% felt Pillip would be better regarding American policy of the war. 41% thought Swazi will handle the situation better. All right, Joyce, so what do these numbers tell us about these issues? What the numbers say is that on those two issues, um, likely voters d divided on party lines think that Ms. Pillip has mm -hmm. the advantage here. But those aren't the only issues. But those are not the only issues. Mm -hmm. You got to also remember that abortion is another one of those issues. And what the numbers tell us is that Tom Swazi has the advantage there. But again, along party lines, you also have to take a look at these independent and other party voters. Mm -hmm. And these numbers, they're all over the place on issues. On some of them, they like the Republican candidate, and on other ones, they like the Democratic candidate. Ken Bufa, Newsday TV. Ken Joy, thank you. Read more about the poll in the third congressional district race on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Happening today, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments in the case with critical implications for the presidential election. The justices will decide whether former President Donald Trump can be kicked off the ballot in Colorado. That state barred Trump from the ballot in December, saying his actions around the January 6th attack on the Capitol amounted to insurrection. The Supreme Court is expected to to issue a decision before Colorado's primary in March. A raging fire devoured a home in North Amityville. You can see what firefighters were dealing with last night. This was 41st Street. Police tell us the fire started in the basement of this house. We're told everyone inside, including a dog, escaped unharmed. In Nassau, a 69-year-old woman was hurt in a house fire here in Seaford. Police say the flames broke out yesterday evening on Willoughby Avenue. A woman suffered burns to her hand. The Red Cross is helping displaced residents. Our state wants to lower your cost for prescription drugs. The state Senate passed bills aimed at ending co-pays on insulin. They would also lower the cost the state pays for medications purchased through Medicaid and Medicare. The bills now move to the state assembly. A new law is taking aim at hidden credit card processing fees. So what are these changes and what do they mean for the everyday consumer? Business reporter Chris Kahn breaks it all down. So right now, uh, whenever you go to a store and you might pay with a credit card, uh, a lot of places will charge you the cash price and then they'll tack on a credit card fee. Uh, it's called a surcharge. It's just the way that they are able to pay for uh, having that credit card service. Really can't do that anymore. Uh, there's a new law that uh, requires all merchants in New York to show you the actual price uh, that includes the credit card charge. The higher price is the one that they have to show you. Uh, and they can do that in a number of different ways. Uh, either they can just tell you, you know, here's the price with the credit card charge, or they could just charge you the same price, price whether you're uh, paying with a credit card or with cash. So where can consumers expect to see these changes? You're going to see this pretty much wherever places accept credit cards. Uh, this is going to be your laundromats, this is going to be your hairstylists, grocery stores at local bars. Everywhere that accepts credit cards, they have to follow this rule. Chris, thank you. You can read more about this new law on Newsday.com. A new chairman named at Hicksville's New York Community Bancorp, Sandro Donello, 
has taken over. Danello vows to do whatever it takes to strengthen the leader's or lender's finances after it reported a quarterly loss that sparked a massive stock sell-off on Wall Street. The remarks follow the bank's credit rating being downgraded to junk by Moody's on Tuesday. Shelter Island putting a pause on dock building, citing growing environmental concerns. The town implemented a three-month moratorium permit approvals. During that time, it will revisit or revise zoning laws. We're told the new dock guidelines will factor in environmental conditions and the appropriateness of certain locations. Checking out your hyperlocal Thursday forecast, sunny today, highs around 45 degrees. Tonight, lows in the 30s. Tomorrow, expect more sunshine and we warm up with highs in the 50s. A look at your seven day forecast coming up. Long Island weather is brought to you by Home Tax Saver, PTRC Incorporated. A Wyandanche barber is bringing his community together. Our celebration of Black History Month continues in a story you'll see only in Newsday. The vision really for me was trying to find something that was different in our community. When I usually go into New York City, go into the shops here, I'm always looking at the different architectural designs, some of the textures inside of those shops, and I wanted to bring something like that back to Long Island. It creates an atmosphere that's, you know, therapeutic, that's relaxing, that's positive, that's uplifting for the kids when they come here, and also for the parents. What I really like is that I can schedule things online, it's really good vibes here. I get good haircuts. A barber or a beauty salon is more of a service-based industry where you can stop, pause, have a conversation, get to know your clients, your clients get to know you, and now you're creating a rapport, not just a transaction. So when you look at the wine dance community, like again, it's a very tight-knit community, okay, which is great. And you have, like I said, probably four generations that have been here that have seen the changes that are taking place in wine dance, and it uplifts their spirit. It makes them feel like things are changing which is a great thing. It's all about that community, giving back and letting them see there's possibilities in your area. Read more about Sir Shave Parlor on Newsday.com. Just click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Competitive youth sports are leading to injuries here on the island. So how can our kids avoid getting burned out and hurt? Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. I loved it right away. TJ Doyle started playing t-ball at four, football at five, and also lacrosse. Like lots of other young athletes across Long Island, he was playing and practicing a lot. My body obviously wasn't bad when I was younger, but as you get older, then you just start getting little injuries here and there that don't allow you to perform at your potential. He gave up lacrosse and now at age 17, he says he's healthy and hyper-focused on football and baseball. And do you want to play um, in college? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Doctors say athletes still playing by the slogan, no pain, no gain, could end up striking out with their sport sooner than they want to. I think there's an epidemic of overuse injuries, especially on Long Island. Dr. James Barcy is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Stony Brook Children's Hospital. He works with young athletes like TJ. The most common injuries he sees? Shoulders, elbows, wrists, backs, knees, heels, and ankles. It's really emphasizing that you want to try to think of the big picture. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, missing a few weeks out of a season really isn't that big of a deal if you think about long-term health and future athletic prospects. Tell that to an athlete worried about losing their spot, a coach who wants to win, and parents focused on potential college scholarships. It's a very tough balancing act. Tom Doyle knows that all too well because he wears all three hats, 
He's a sports dad, a coach, and he's in the medical field. I mean, one of the things that we've we've done is that December and and for the most of January is, you know, his resting period, is TJ's resting period where, you know, we recoup, we let his body recoup, his muscles. The family is also incorporating other strategies they learned from Dr. Barcy. Yeah, he recommended just stretch multiple times a day, ice it. Pretty much that's the best therapy for it, and over time it got better for me. So how do you know how much is too much when it comes to training, practicing, and playing a sport? And I mean, I think it's loosely defined as enough rest to allow your body not to be in pain. Pain is your body's way of telling you to take it easy. Dr. Barcy says you just have to listen. I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. Read more stories like this on Newsday.com. Just click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. It's Friday Eve, and here's what's up on Long Island. <laughs> Celebrate Black History Month and see the exhibit 55 Years of Black Creativity. It features artwork by members of the Long Island Black Artists Association. It's Sunday through March 23rd at Westbury Arts in Westbury. The Long Beach Polar Bear Super Bowl Splash takes a plunge, or you're going to take a plunge, into the Atlantic Ocean for a good cause Sunday in Long Beach. Meet at Riverside Boulevard and Broadway. Another one bites the dust, and another one, and another one, another one bites the dust. Yes. The Almost Queen, the tribute band salutes Queen during a live concert at the Paramount in Huntington on Saturday. For admission info and more events, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. In this day and age of social media and of misinformation everywhere you look, it's so critical for my work to come from a respected, trusted source where readers know they can trust it day in and day out. Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for watching. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.